Hello and welcome back. It's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth, and today we're going to be playing Cold Hot Gold Dot. Um, now, I mean, like, when you've got such a, like, a, I guess, a title, coming up with a story or a theme is a little bit tough, but yeah, as you can see from the thumbnail, I picked up on the word gold here. And we've got Sleuth down and you know, down a mine. Uh, it could be cold, it could be hot. I'm sure the temperature massively fluctuates in there. And perhaps investigating uh, a crime of some sort, usually a murder, I guess, about some gold dots that were found. And there is clearly a treasure of them in there. Um, that's the story I'm sticking to. Let's take a look at today's puzzle and rule sets. So if you hadn't already guessed about the gold dots, it is all about shifter dots. And uh, this puzzle... So I think, like, you know, Gobbler made that comment that the shifted dots in general just haven't had as much attention as he would have hoped. And, uh, you know, he's absolutely right. It is almost a 90% rated puzzle. There's only been 146 solves over in, like, almost a third of the year. So I'm really glad to be featuring it and uh, taking a stab at it. Now, I guess cold and hot here, you've got, obviously, the thermometers. And the gold dots, well, you've got the shifter dots. Let's talk about the rules. We've got normal Sudoku rules. That means place the digits one to nine once each in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Shifter dots, digits on different sides of a shifter dot must always share either parity, even slash odd, or polarity, high slash low. Never neither, never both, and shifter dots can never have a five on it. So let's pick this shifter dot here as an example. If this was was a two. Well, the other side is either going to be sharing the same polarity, as in it's also low, but not parity. So it'll be odd. That's one possibility. The other possibility is it's shared, is sharing the same parity, but not polarity, such as six or eight. What you cannot do is share both parity and polarity, like a four, or share neither so it's neither low nor odd it's high sorry neither low nor even it's high and odd seven and nine and the last obvious example is you can't have a five so with such an example it's one three six or eight right let's keep going a black dot between cells indicates cell values with a two to one ratio and not all dots are shown so if this cell here was a two this would have to be one or four, so that one cell is double the other. That would be fine. Not all dots are shown means if this was actually a, a, a one and down here was a four, well, there's no black dots between them, and clearly the four is double the two. That's absolutely fine. No negative constraints applied today. Now, the last example or the last variant rule that we have for today is the thermometer. Uh, let's use this thermometer here. So digits along a thermometer must increase from the bulb end. So you could do one, two, three, four. That would be fine. Uh, it is clearly increasing from the bulb end. What you couldn't do is have something where it is decreasing from the bulb end. Or, you know, have a five which is clearly uh, lower than the four that's higher up. Uh, you don't have to have step changes. So that could have been a three, that can be a five, and that can be a nine for all I care. Well, not nine, eight. That would be an absolutely appropriate fill-out for this particular thermometer, obviously, given all the other constraints. So, that's all the rules we have for today. So, if you want to join uh, Sleuth in the gold mine, not necessarily a bad idea. That's a good way of getting rich. Link will be in the description down below, as usual, for you to play along. And uh, with that said, I'm going to restart the clock and see how I get on. So, I'm looking, actually, at this giant thermometer it is seven cells long and normally in a thermometer that is seven cells long it would have a couple of degrees of freedom but at the same time i'm also noticing that all of these are shifted dot cells so no fives so actually removes one degree of freedom at least so let's take a look at possibilities that could be one that could be two this could be three this could be four can't be a five so the next one would have to be at least a six no fives on shifter dots, which makes this seven, makes this eight. Um, I could try more. Can I do two, three? Yes. Four? Yes. Six? Yes. 
seven, eight, nine. And I think that is all my degrees of freedom. I did say there isn't going to be many because of the five. What I'm also noticing is that because this is a black dot, let me think about this. Can I skip? No. Right, so this is probably a good time to actually um, introduce something very quickly. So we talked about polarities and parity. So there are clearly some pairs that naturally go together where they share both parity and polarity. One thing about shifted dots is essentially you can always shift one. So the way that you think you can think about this is this is imagine this is a circle. You can always go clockwise or counterclockwise around this. What you can never do is go across diagonally or stay in place when you come across a shifted dot. So the net result is you can actually color code these to be blue and red. And essentially, every time that you go across a dot, you have to shift color because you can't stay in place and you can't go across diagonally. Now, this is very useful because it can allow you to start coloring. More importantly, it may allow me to actually force some things in here. Some of the things that I'm thinking of, for example, is I cannot have four and seven next to one another on the shifter dot because that would be a cross on the diagonal. And I'm shifting both parity and polarity as a result. So clearly, one of these has to be a six, which would be red. And then one of these will be blue with four or seven. So that means what exactly? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it was kind of useful, but not exactly. So if this is a six, this would have to be three. If this is, oh, same thing here. I can't have one, three. They are both, essentially, I'm not shifting at all. So I have to use a two in here. And therefore, if this is a four, this would have to be an eight. Notice that two is looking on here. So this is not one, two. This is not two, four. Potentially, it's, oh, hang on. Eight. I'm guessing it's the same thing in here. I have to go either seven eight or eight nine. I can't go seven nine because they're both in the same spot. So no eights and no twos means this is not one two, not two four, not four eight. This is definitely three six. And therefore this is definitely an eight, because it's not a three. And therefore this is definitely a four. This is a three. This is a two. This is a one. Lovely. I did say there has to be a six. Four and seven clearly are of the same color. So this has to be a six. And then I don't know what these two are. Uh, keep this in mind. I am going to delete it now, but it is a useful reference. Right. This cell clearly not one, two, not three, six either. It is four, eight. And that eight gives us an order. That's an eight. That's a four, to be fair. So does this four give us an order as well. Um, anything useful in here? You know, one and two are up there. Five, seven, nine, not very useful. So it feels like it's the kind of puzzle where we're going to have to have multiple break-ins and sort of somehow try and actually join it together. One that's coming to mind is actually down here, this particular black dot. So it's a thermometer. Right, without a 4, 8, the other two possibilities would be 1 and 2, which it isn't, because what digit am I good at? put in place between the one and the two? And the answer is nothing. The other possibility is it's three, six, and that is the only possibility because they are far enough apart and four, eight are not allowed. So that's four, five. This cell here has to be blue. Uh, the options would have been seven and nine. Same challenge, if that's a seven, I can't put six and a half between six and seven. That has to be a nine. This is seven or eight, lovely. This other area definitely catches my attention. So I am going to use some false colors, as in colors where I don't actually know whether they're red or blue. But what I can see is that all of these are the same, and this cell is different. Essentially, you go from purple to orange, and obviously because of these shifter dots and these and these and these, that orange goes back out to purple. So if you remember the colors, if they're all red, that will be one, three, six, and eight. If they're all blue, that will be two, four, seven, and nine. That's all looking good. Uh, too many options to list in here. It's basically everything other than five. I am gonna just ignore it. 
just checking if I can have five here, six, seven, eight, nine. No, I'll show you why. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, it may seem like that is possible. Pardon me, I was just looking for my phone because I feel like I'm hearing it ring. But notice that these two cells are again two shifter dots apart. So the seven would be blue, this would be red, and this would have to be blue, and it isn't, it's an eight. And the reason I kind of specifically tested the five is, well, if five is not here, five is not a shifter dot, five is not a shifter dot, five is not in a black croquet dot, not a shifter dot, that's the only place for a five in column eight. Right, can we do a lot more with this? What can I do here? So this can't be as high as five. Can it even be a four? Four, six, seven. That would have to be eight and nine again. Just the thermometer rules can't have a five on a shifter dot. And again, we have the same challenge with the seven and eight. So it can't even be as high as four. So actually thinking about the thermometer here, this is one, two, three. Let's just go through it systematically. If this is one, this could this is not two. If that's one, that is three. Otherwise I'd break this cell. And if this is three, it has to shift colors. It could be four. Uh, this has to be the same color as four. So we'd be jumping all the way up to seven. And this can't even be an eight. That's a nine. Wow. So if this is a one, the entire line is forced. That's incredible. Let's keep going. If this is a two, I don't see a problem with this being three. Yeah, because that would be one. That could be three. And then same logic applies. Three can't jump all the way to seven because this can never be seven. We've established this a few times. And if this is a three, the next one along that is a different color, well, it's only four. And if it's not four, the next one would be seven, which is way too far away. So what am I saying? One and two both end up with three. What if this is a three? One and two both end up with three in here. Could I have gone two, four? Let's just think about this. Can I do two, four? This would have to be red if that's four. So that could be six. Then that would have to be red, that would have to be eight, and then we're back to nine. The nine feels like it's always gonna be forced. Then the last option surely would be, this is a three, four, six, eight, nine. Now, I don't think this can be bigger than four because it's not five, six would force a seven, and then eight is wrong. So yeah, that can't be bigger than six, can't be bigger than five, that is a maximum of four. So this is a maximum of three. Uh, this is a minimum of four we've established. One would go to three to four, because of this two. Um, can't be a five on a shifter dot. If it's a seven, it breaks because that would be eight, nine. So six is it. So yeah, this feels complete in terms of pencil marks. This is normally where I tend to screw up, if you don't mind me using that language because I end up forgetting about a possibility and then I write in and I say, well, in every scenario, this is a nine and uh, I'll make a mistake inevitably. Sorry, I'm just double checking. This feels like such an odd conclusion that I am suspicious. Well, I shouldn't be suspicious of, it's just some Sudoku. No fours, no fours, that's a four, which remarkably gives me a six, gives me an eight, gives me colors more importantly, and therefore this can't be three, it has to be four, it's not five. I mean, okay, sorry, let me color. Red, blue, blue. Can this be two? No, because that would be four swinging a one and that would break this cell. So this has to be four. Fortunately, that leaves it fairly open-ended with one, two, three here. And this is blue, and in fact, so is the nine. So this is limited to two or seven. 
And there's another two or seven in here because there is, you know, blue and red in this cell. So there's another two seven in here. I'm pretty sure the two is not at the end of this thermometer, but I can have a seven at the end here. So it doesn't necessarily allow me to place it, but interesting. Probably, is it worthwhile adding more colors? I really don't want to. Any way I can force any of this? No, no, no. Sorry, this looks a bit weird. Yeah, it is a thermometer, okay. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Do I want to do this? Do I want to have a look at that? I've got a very strange thing going on here as well with nine and four. And we know that there is another two or seven in here. So the two seven seem to be everywhere. I'm going to do this one first because it may help me resolve this. And that would be a big win. Right. One of these has to be two or seven. So either this is a two or this is a seven, not both. If that's a two, well, this is not three. So if this is two, this would be red. And this is at least four. This would have to be red and it's not five. It's not six, it's not seven. It would be all the way up to eight, which it isn't. That is incredible. Can't have as little as two in here. I really, this is so suspicious. Two, can't be three, already at four. Can't be five on a shifted dot, can't be six because it's the wrong color. Sorry, it is the right color. What's wrong with six? Nothing's wrong with six. Six, oh, it's in the row, silly. It would have to jump up to eight and it's not available. Wow. Okay. So this is not red because six and eight are gone. This would have to be three. This would have to be two. This would have to be one and they're the same color. So this is blue. Therefore, this is red. This is definitely not the two from the two sevens that are available. That's left. So this has to be the seven. This is not eight. It's a nine. And of course, because it's also blue. So that's looking good. And this has to be red. And it's not three, and it can't be six. This is a one. Three is in the row. Six is, you know, again, same problem. We end up with six and a half on here. So that's a one. This would have to be two, not three, four. Five is fine, six and seven, okay? Annoyingly, hasn't actually helped me. I kind of thought if I can plug in some digits in here, help me resolve this, and it still hasn't. You can see with the fours that four is in one of two cells. I should be able to color this. This is orange, because I've already placed four purples. Therefore, this is purple. So these two are fours, and this is not a four. How about Sudoku, Sleuth, seriously, three, one, six, eight, not a one, uh, not a six. That's three, that's six, that's two. This is now a blue digit, which is not seven or four. It is two and uh, not two, it's just nine. Which gives me eight up here, which gives me seven in there. Lovely. And I can just quickly replace these and these so i have some more digits placed uh doesn't stop this from being four this is not six or eight it'll be one or three sorry i may have to pause temporary this is blue not two four or nine it is a seven thankfully it's all working so well um in here essentially i have it's not nine it could be seven. It's two, four, or seven. That's quite a few options. Seven is forced. This is a four, seven pair. And this is a two, five pair. Not resolved, mind you. 
Right, uh, I do need to pause. Apologies, I need to do something quickly and then I'll be back. Sorry about this. Right, apologies. Um, I'm just going to resume because actually I'm waiting for something that will interrupt me in a second, but I have a tiny bit more time, so I'm going to carry on in the interim. These are one, two, nine. This is one and nine, it's not a two. There's a definite two in here. One, two, and nine. Can't do anything with the nines just yet. And I have another one nine in here and something else. Something else is an eight. That is not an eight. That's the eight. That's one and nine. Okay. We have another one, three, nine, and a five in one of these two cells. Not a problem. Have I resolved any of these? No. This one? No. Maybe this thermometer? I'm just going to just double check I didn't miss some obvious Sudokus like I often do. Such as these are 5, 7 and 9. This is seven or nine. This is not a nine. This is five or seven. This is any of them. No, oh, that wasn't very helpful. The one is here. That's a one. Just Sudoku. Two. Well, there's none of these cells. That's the only place for a two. That's a two. And I have another four, five, and another seven, eight. So that's the end of that. This is four or five, not resolved. Three has to be one of these cells, one of these two specifically. Yeah, time to think about this thermometer. So helpful, we've eliminated the two, because essentially this cell is now Say helpful, we've eliminated the two. That is not true. Uh, this is not one or three, but it can actually be as low as two. This could be as low as three. Uh, remember these, uh, I think I am going to reuse my kind of unknown colors for a second. Because if that's three, the next one along is six. Next one along would be eight. And then, yeah, actually that does work, eight. Sorry, for a second, I thought the thermometer extended beyond that because that nine would have broken it. And we have, you know, a huge world between three and eight. It's not four or six, but five and seven seem available. So two, three, five, seven, eight, that looks fine. That was blue, that two, seven means this would be four, no, nine, and this would be two or seven. So far, oh, hang on, this is never a seven, because remember, we needed another two seven in here. So this would be two or seven. And this would be not seven, not two, it could be four or nine. So surprisingly, when if I press a two in here, a lot of this is forced. Can't be a three. Next one along is four. Obviously, it means that is no longer a three. It is a shifter dot. Forget the four for a second, actually. So if it's not a three, this would make a four. This would have to be two or seven. It really won't be the two. So presumably that would have to be the seven. Four and seven, this would have to be red. It would be not one or eight. It could be three or six. It's a ton of options. This would have to be red, and it's not three, six, or eight. It would have to be a one, still possible. And the four can absolutely still be a five in here. Four, seven would still force a five, incredibly, because it's not six. Can this be anything other than five? So what happens if I go beyond four? What if this is six? That would be eight. It would have to be the same color. This can't go any higher than eight. This is nine. So this is seven or eight. So if this is six, that is still eight, then broken it. Fine. 
Yes, because of the two seven setup, and therefore between five, sorry, between six and eight would have to be seven, and it's not available. So I can't go higher than four from here, and it always forces a five. These things seem just so unlikely. Some of these deductions that I just I can't help but just keep looking and just thinking, really. Must have made a mistake. No fives. That's a five. Very, feels very suspicious once again. One of these is a four with seven or eight. One of these is a four. That's a three. That has to be red. That is eight. This is therefore two or seven. And we have colors. And therefore, this is blue. And therefore, this is not three or six, it is four or nine. Two seven means these are one three. That three gives me one, gives me three, gives me one, gives me nine, gives me one. Still feeling like it's going to break at any second. Don't know why, but I'm just not trusting some of these deductions. Two nine gives me a five in here. Seven, eight. I mean, so far, all the thermometers and all the shifter dots have been fine. Maybe I should just, you know, feel a bit more confident. That three forces this to be a two. What else do I need in here? I need three, six, and eight. This is not a three or a six. It's an eight. This is the six because of this six. This is the three. Uh, this is... Four, seven, or eight, and all of them seem available still. And this is four or seven, and again, seems to be available. Okay. In here, two seven. Hang on, that nine gave me a seven, which gives me a two, which gives me a seven, which gives me a five, because it can't be a nine. Yeah, can't be a nine. That's a nine. Four, five. Eight in here gave me a seven ages ago, and I just didn't pay attention. Four, four, seven, and therefore eight. Um, that four or nine is now four because of this nine, right? Just no, oh, hang on. Yeah, it is just Sudoku now. So I need a one. I need a five. No. Yes, it's broken. See, I was always suspicious. I don't know which deduction was it that's done it. I've got to pause again. I'll be back in a bit. All right, sorry about that. Uh, let's pick this up. So yeah, I stopped where I said. I don't know why that wasn't a five. Did I just do a bad job? Excuse me, I'm just gonna rewind. What was wrong with that being a five, for example? I don't see the problem. And it was never a nine. So this this is possibly just bad pencil marking on my part, and that the rest of the conclusion was fine. That this is actually indeed a four. And that is indeed a seven. That is indeed a four, seven. I mean all of it seemed fine up to that point. So and this is also not a five seven and that this is a nine. It feels so much more likely that that was all I the mistake that I made. Uh, don't particularly want to try and unwind a lot more. That means that this is two, seven, and one. One hasn't changed. This is two or seven. It's two. That's seven. That's two. It's looking good. Um, could be a bit of a silly mistake on my part earlier. Six, nine in here. One of these cells, five and something else. Five and six. That is the six. That is the five. These cells, I need a three, I need a four, which would have to resolve my four, five at the bottom, and a seven, which has to be in here. That's four, that's five, that's four, it's looking good. One has to be in here, two is in there, five is in here. That two gave me the nine and two. This is looking good, despite some of these shaky conclusions earlier. Six. Gives me nine and six, seven, 
1.9, and that's a resolution. That's a lovely puzzle, Gobbler. Yeah, it's just some of the deductions just felt so like really, really odd. You know that this nine was forced. That you know this one seven was forced. Um, that despite this being a three, this forces an eight in here. So there's some just surprising and unintuitive deductions along the way. That just means that you're kind of lacking confidence every step of the way. You're thinking, wow, this feels odd. Wow, this feels weird. But aside from that sentiment, if you just trust that you know what you're doing, such as I can label and uh, uh, put in five, seven, not seven, nine, um, as intended. So providing you don't make silly mistakes like that, you've got it. Hope that you guys enjoyed the puzzle video, maybe. And uh, see you back for the next one. Bye-bye for now.